This is what the life savings of a semi-irresponsible 40-year-old looks like. I bought this boat last year after convincing my wife I was going to take the family sailing around the world. I promised we'd cross massive oceans like Delos did, discover abandoned beaches like Parlay, and see the most incredible parts of our world just like the winds were doing. But I lied because the boat we bought was actually broken. I had to move to a foreign country and abandon the family for almost a year just so I could fix our boat. But today, I came back for them. And we just flew 2,000 miles to Panama so I can show them their boat for the very first time. We're making the final trek back to the marina. I brought the entire family with me. By entire family, I mean Mary Hi. and babies. Hi. We left the two little babies at home. Okay. Diddy boy, I love you, buddy. Yeah. He's really mad that we're leaving him. I'm gonna go fix the boat and then I'm gonna make you a special room in the boat. Bye. These guys back here are going to see the boat for the very first time ever. Oh I made Mary do this entire drive through roads full of crazy potholes. Like crazy. trying to dodge landmines. But what do you think about Panama so far? Really good. Yeah, that's because you've been staying at a four-star hotel. Of course he thinks it's good. Wait till he gets to the marina. And he has to sleep in a car because, yes, we're sleeping in this van until we splash this boat. Whoa. These are your trampolines. You're going to get to lay here once we get all this stuff out of there. Those are our beds right now. Yes, that's super heavy. This going to be your play place up there. This is the flybridge. This is where we sit when we're sailing. Guys, what do you think about the boat? Good. Really good. Are you excited? Yes. Yeah. They have no idea what they're in store for. Come on. Let's do some fiberglassing. Middle bulkheads from starboard to port. We're going to knock you out today, baby. Uh, that may be a little bit aggressive, considering it took me 10 months to do the two forward bulkheads there and up there. Granted, I didn't know anything at the time and I had to learn everything from scratch. The middle bulkheads are basically a wall that runs from that hull over there all the way across to the edge of that hull over there. It's what keeps the two hulls parallel with each other and prevents them from moving independently. Unfortunately, it detached pretty much all the way across. The middle bulkheads are broken up into five different areas. The middle section under the salon floor, the steering sheaves inside the double cabinet, the starboard cabin right side of the boat, the port side cabin left side of the boat, and the garbage chute cave where I removed the garbage cabinet. Be glassing that wall to the left all the way to the steering sheaves all the way down into the middle part out here's that middle part then we'll proceed port down the side fiberglass all that dry area up into the wall then we'll come down into the port hull aft cabin now we're on the front side of that bulkhead and we'll just tab all the way down same thing check yard check yard so we're gonna have to cut that corner piece right there that hits the hole. Stop filming, you have a YouTube channel or something? <laughs> What's up dude? You guys are back! Good to see you. What are you doing? Those are the steering sheaves down there where the pulleys from the top of the boat where you steer it comes yeah. down, the cable goes all the way aft, and when the boat bent it was pulling so hard up it tore the fiberglass. It actually cracked a lot of the fiberglass. So we had to grind it all down and then we're gonna put six layers on top and then two on the bottom. Dude, this guy. So Why are we not we rocking been... our own channel we're, hats? We're wearing everybody else's hats. <laughs> you got Harley and I've got the cruiser cat. I, I was actually gonna see if you had your truck that I could use just for the day. I would say yes, but we are actually living in it right now. It's crazy. So there's a bed built out <laughs> and everything. How to make a camper van with two kids and no tools. US vans, the seats just ch -ch -ch and then come out. These seats are bolted in. Step one, unbolt the seats and find somewhere to stash them. This is going to take a long time, right? Beat sleeping in fiberglass. In the beginning, I actually slept on the boat while I was working on it. But once the fiberglassing started... Ouch! Oh, that hurt. Loosen it up. I'll take that out. Good job, baby girl. Lefty Lucy, buddy. Don't want to lose these. Step two, find something to level the floors and cover the brackets. And I have to say, it's so nice to have the family here to help. Otherwise, I'd be doing this all myself. And you would be fooling. 
going on by yourself. Exactly. Yeah, I'd be filming. Are. This is what boat life is supposed to be about. Come on, man. I'm loving it. Are you happy that we're here? What do you mean am I happy? I love it that you're here. Step three. Geek out over this $300 airbed just because it's got foam inside. So when the airbed goes limp in the middle of the night, the foam keeps the bed up. These valves are super cool. You can reverse them. So this is let air out valve, flip it, and then this is let air in valve. All right, dear, we have a bed. How does it feel? How does it feel? A little uneven because of these little brackets here. A uh, little May here, she's not brushing her teeth because she dropped her toothbrush on the ground. May, why did you drop your toothbrush on the ground? I was pointing to the other hand because mom... Why did it say, oh, I don't know what happened. How did it fall? It's not the right thing. This is my office area. Steering wheel desk. This is the bunk for the boo. He's asleep right now. Headrest removed, dashboard. Perfect support for a bunk. We got a bed built horizontally at the very back for May. Mary's on the left, I'm on the right. We got the Winix HEPA filter going. I got a Ryobi fan somewhere around here. That night was so fun. We stayed up half the night working on the van, but back to fiberglass. Doing the dry fit is so important. We just figured out that we need to grind a little bit more gel coat and also sand a little bit higher up under the wall. Epoxy needs a rough surface for it to achieve maximum holding power. Shiny gel coat is actually the worst. One final clean. He's making some rags out of my favorite shirt. We've gone through at least a dozen gallons of acetone doing this. Did I mention I hate fiberglass dust? And that it's the bane of my existence? And that if I knew then what I know now, I probably would have given up before I even started? So I'm kind of glad that I didn't know because we'd be boatless if I did. Let's suit up! The key to filming while fiberglassing is tons of gloves. My hands get covered in epoxy no matter how careful I am. I just tear off a layer every time I need to touch the camera. This is me putting on 10 pairs of gloves, which will let me touch the camera 18 times. You wanna do some fiberglassing? No, never say yes to that, say no. This is my son, David, does he look like me? All right, go. Get away from fiberglass. We're using this total boat epoxy. The hardener needs to be mixed up a little bit, but so far, so good. I can't tell the difference between this stuff and West. And I've used a lot of West. Boom, two of those. So we'll go to the bottom four with the resin and then the top four with the hardener. Oh, perfecto. This guy's got skill, man. If you need boat work, I'm telling you, Carlos Torres, Linton Bay Marina, baby. See, I know. See. And then mix the heck out of it. Every part of the epoxy has to touch every part of the hardener. So you have to scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. Are you guys sick of these fiberglassing montages yet? I bet you haven't memorized. Wet down the surfaces with epoxy. Wet out the fiberglass layers. Every single layer till it's completely saturated. Stack those layers and keep on wetting. Smush the fiberglass onto the surfaces. Mush out all the air. Mix more epoxy. Four. Oh, I am good, baby. Look at that. Quattro. So much more epoxy. We went through at least a gallon in this section. We probably could have stacked all six layers and just went in there once, but it was a bit awkward and we were trying to avoid drips. This is the last piece going in. <laughs> All right, I'm up next. We're gonna try to connect that previous work down into here. This part's actually kind of fun because I'm building it back up piece by piece. Just to give you an idea, you're watching this at 30 times the speed with all the pauses cut out. Half of my upper body was squeezed in through the hole, so I was only able to use one arm at a time. All layers done. I can't remember how many. I'm a little heat strokey right now. I am completely dehydrated. Got a bunch of water in these boots. Not gonna finish the other side today. We'll do that manana. Manana, manana, I love ya, manana. This is what I missed most about being away this past year. Getting to make my family laugh and getting to take care of them. I'm on bug spray patrol. Now I can just pop up after a stressful day of boat work and just see them. I get this mental reset that makes me feel like I can handle anything. This is the one place that you can get food here at Linton Bay. Omira is whipping us up a sick pizza. Uh, no big deal, I'm basically a manager here. I know where the key is to open the beer cooler. You're not a manager. I think I am because only a manager would be allowed back here in the kitchen. Cebolla, champiñones, pepperoni. Champiñones. That's David, I gotta say, yes. your Spanish is impeccable. Is it? Yes, my Spanish is so good. <laughs> And now for my favorite part of fiberglassing, the morning after. Ah, oh, that's the sound you want to hear. 
you can see how we overlap the two parts. The tabbing up into the wall and then the steering sheaves, they overlap each other. It gives you that extra strength. All right, so we got James from Zef back. He's going to be cameraman today for us, which is so much easier. I don't have to wear like 15 layers of gloves and tear them off as I move the GoPro. We're going to glass everything from here over. It's actually just three layers. All right, meet your new cameraman. Boom. James Zephyr. Oh, we need Cabasil. See, this is the problem. I forget stuff. We need to make a fillet, so we need Cabasil. What is that, babe? All right, so that's Cabasil. That's what we put inside the epoxy resin so we can thicken it up, make it into like peanut butter texture, and then we put it in that corner right there. We make a fillet so that fiberglass can just, just so smooth. Because 90 degree angle, you can't glass that. I don't know why, I just know you can't do it. <laughs> How are you even gonna work in there? Guys, if I can figure this out, anyone can. Did you know in the beginning, I didn't know what epoxy was? And I didn't even know that the boat was made of fiberglass? The whole process is kind of like paper mache, just with much more toxic material. And any mistakes are completely permanent. So we can kind of pivot around this corner. This is a third layer, Dave. Same size or smaller? Same size, and we just keep on offsetting it just a tiny bit each time. My Spanish is limited and Carlos doesn't speak a lick of English, but we've been working together every single day for months now. And he can basically read my mind. Like right here where I only use two Spanish words repeated with different inflections to convey the fact that- Done. Okay, Carlito. Yeah. Tu? Okay. okay, tu, okay, yo. Si, si, tu. Just for you guys who want to know where Dave actually was. <laughs> This is actually where the garbage bin is. So that's where he was just glassing inside the garbage bin. Right leg is completely asleep. Nancy is the Linton Bay laundry lady. Alexi is just prepping this home for us. Gracias, Nancy. Gracias. Gracias. Oh, yeah. oh. Without her, all of our clothes would still be packed with itchy fiberglass dust. Nancy is nice. Hola, Nancy. ¿Cómo está, mi amor? Mi amor dos. <laughs> mi amor uno, mi amor dos. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. I left Carlos in charge. This is the first time I've let him glass just by himself. Coca? I'm used to Mexican Spanish where coca means Coca-Cola, but in Panama, coca means cocaine. That's why Alexi's hesitant. Coca-Cola. <laughs> Alexis, he didn't drink beer. He doesn't party. All he does is work, drink Coke, and saves his money. Let's see how he did. Oh, yeah. Y tres capas de fibra. No hay. I couldn't have done better myself. Now we only have one section to go, but we're gonna have to do a little thinking on this one because of all the different angles that are coming in. You've got that centerpiece that comes up. We have to make sure that everything we're doing doesn't affect how the deck goes back into place. We decided to deal with it tomorrow and then somehow ended up at the most expensive hotel on this side of Panama. We are at a hotel where Luisa works. Luisa is Carlos's wife. She has asked us to come and help um, make a drone footage for the hotel so they can put it on their Instagram page. Make a drone footage. <laughs> Shoot some drone footage. Shoot. Make a drone footage. Uh, make a drone footage for you and make some for you. It's actually a private home slash resort and the owner lives here full time. And the whole place runs off the grid like a boat. That's a lot of batteries. And a lot of solar panels. And not a bad infinity pool either. We're here doing some drone footage for uh, her boss. He bought a drone and he was like, uh, can you teach us how to fly it? I was like, it didn't really work like that. It takes a little longer than just real quick. We got some really cool footage, footage of this place, but I want to stay here. How do we get to stay here? We did get invited to dinner with the owner. Maybe he'll let us stay in a room too. Look at how close we are to the water, 10 feet. We're so close to splashing, guys. The center part of this bulkhead. It's the hardest part because Lagoon built it wrong to begin with. The deck was never touching the bulkhead. They squirted glue all along the top of the bulkhead, dropped the deck down, but the deck never touched. There was a gap. So we had to grind out all the glue. We're about to put a bunch of filler right there in the middle to close the gap. We had to cut a hole in the floor on the inside to access it. We're going in. It took so long for me to finally get the hang of all this. And now that I'm finally starting to enjoy it, we're moments from never having to do it again. Look at all these layers go down and just melt into the surface. Oh, so satisfying. I wonder if I'm gonna miss all this boat work once we're back in the water. 
Look at how many layers are going down. This middle section will be the strongest part of the boat by far. A thousand years from now, some civilization's gonna find what's left of this boat. The mast and deck will be long gone. The hull's unrecognizable. But these ridiculously epoxy bulkheads will still be exactly as you see them here today. We're about 10 minutes away from being completely done with the middle bulkhead. He's my brother from another mother. Would not be able to do this without him. <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> Hole is fixed, tabbed into the deck. Ah, oh, got gloves, resin to my skin. All right guys, we're getting close. We're getting so close. I can't wait to get under the water and show you guys some real boat life. Subscribe. That is so cool. I'm showing off my work to Maria. Yeah, that's Caladro. I have hives all over me from eating some empanadas. We ate some nasty empanadas in Panama City. They weren't nasty, they were actually really tasty. Yeah. Next time we take Mary to a tiny Panamanian hospital where they don't understand a lick of my broken Spanish. So we end up having to play one big game of charades. <laughs>